All right. So it took me longer than I expected to set up the lab, I think. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and share screen and we can get started. Oh, and the other thing is I've posted the slides in the demo right here uh, on the screen. So you should be able to see it now. Okay. Okay, so for lab five, we're just going to quickly do some pandas review. Uh, we're going to start using pandas today. And then after that, we're going to work on some of the data manipulation and data improvement things that Nate just talked about, as well as um, also using you know machine learning techniques in order to fix your data set. So for example, if you had missing values, um, how do we use you know regression or some other algorithm in order to fix that, right? So we're going to start by, uh, as per usual, uh, importing the the Iris data set from sklearn. So we're going to go ahead and do pretty much the same thing we did yesterday. So from sklearn.datasets, import load Iris. And from the feedback yesterday, um, a lot of people wanted you know comments to be added to the code. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. So. We're going to go ahead. Yeah. And once again, this demo is already posted on the resources doc. So if you ever need to refer back to it, um, yeah, it'll be there. All right. So same thing. At this point, everyone could probably finish this line before me because we've typed it all three labs. Uh, And then once again, just to check, we're going to print X and print Y and run all the code cells above. All right, looks good. And so now we're going to begin, you know, the, the meat of the lab, so to speak. So we're actually going to begin uh, working with pandas. So import pandas as PD. Okay, and now that we have that, we can go ahead and start by creating a data frame. So this is potentially a bit of a review from Python, uh, from Py whatever Python class you've taken before, but it's good to run all of your code cells before you run the next one, and it's also good to review. So as you can see, um, the df.head method or function, whatever you want, want to call it in this case, it gives you the first five elements of, uh, of, of our data frame. And we've created the data frame with X. So X is our 2D array from the load iris function. And now we've converted it into a pandas data frame. And something interesting you'll also note is that if you go ahead and look at the documentation for pandas, you'll find that uh, df.head, and then you can put in the parentheses how many of your elements you want. So theoretically, you could put df.head 150, but since that's our whole data set and it's also 150 rows, it doesn't really show up. So we're just gonna stick with the default five for now. Okay. So now, you know, we have our five, uh, our five rows and those we know are data sets. So those just correspond to our samples, but the columns, they're just named zero, one, two, and three, right? So does anyone remember what the columns were from yesterday? Even just one of them. Can anyone name any of the columns? Yes. Pedal width. Pedal width is one of them. Yes. Height. Sorry. Seed height. Seed height. Not exactly, as far as I'm aware. Okay. 
So for reference, uh, if you couldn't hear at the back, this, the first kind of answer is it was pedal width, right? Yeah, pedal width. So corresponding from that, pedal length, yes. And then does anyone here study flowers? Okay, me neither. But the other two are sepal length and sepal width. Okay. So in this case, we're going to convert the, the columns of the data frame, the column names into the, the corresponding uh, names. So I'm going to go ahead and add the columns uh, and then add the comments to both of these code blocks. Okay. And once you run that, if you run df.head again, you can see that our columns have been successfully renamed. Okay. So once again, it's always good practice just to print out everything over and over uh, when you're debugging. So we can also run the command df.info in order to check, you know, the type, the uh, the number of elements that are in, in our data set, and then also what each of the columns corresponds to. So here we can see we have 150 entries. It corresponds to from zero to 149, all of the indices. And all of the types of each of these columns are all floats. So all of the numbers correspond to, all of the values here correspond to a float. Okay, great. And if we want to make it even more specific, we can go df.describe, which will give you even more specific metrics. So count, mean, standard deviation, uh, min, quartiles, and maxes. So this is very um there, there are a lot of there are a lot more statistics built in that you don't have to calculate uh if you were to use a, a 2D list or 2D array. And that's kind of why we use a lot of AI applications would use pandas or numpy. In this case, we're gonna use pandas, but Really, they're kind of interchangeable, and you can use either one. So now we need to, now we can go ahead and kind of work with accessing data and manipulating data in Pandas. And once again, this might be a little bit of a review, so we're just going to go ahead and kind of speed through it. So you can access each column as you would uh, in a list by indexing by the column name. So in this case, I pulled the petal length column. Uh, and you can see there are 150 values corresponding to all of the petal lengths for every single sample. You could also do petal width, um, sepal length, and sepal width. And then if I were to say do like flower, that doesn't exist, so it's just going to give you a key error. Um, and once again, if you don't know what an error is, just look at the documentation. Okay, that's how we debug. But we're just going to go stick with petal length for now. Okay. And then after this, we can kind of look at the idea of a cursor, so to speak, um, I guess. So a cursor is used to index in, you know, higher dimensional data. So 2D data, um, 3D data, if it's a wine data set, 12D data. Um, and then, uh, so unlike what we did with, you know, just indexing by a column position, we can say like df dot the, the function is going to be df.lock of whatever um, whatever row you want. So in this case, if we're grabbing the first row, these are the values. Uh, and then if you want to grab specifically the first the first row's pedal pedal length, you can do so as as follows. And this corresponds to something like this. Um, so, statements on these. So both of these statements are going to print out the same thing. Uh, and df.lock just kind of saves you a couple brackets, a couple bits of typing. Um, and it's a bit easier to think about. Uh, when you index, when you double index like this, remember that pandas always goes column first. So it's always column, so petal length, and then whatever row you want to pull it from. Okay. We can also look at 
uh, like we did before with df.describe. There are a couple of like statistical elements that Pandas also provides you. So let's say, oops, something like this. Let's grab the pedal width column. Okay, so you remember we can just index by columns. And now that we have that, we can print it out and you see we have the column, fine. Um, and then with, oops, with all of our df.describe data, which we can put into something called stats, we can then go ahead and just grab the specific uh, metrics, or let's say we want the standard deviation of pedal width. We can go ahead and do that like so, and we'll print it out. Okay, and that's the standard deviation of the pedal width. So if you have, uh, like 12 different columns, for example, like we would in the wine data set, you can go ahead and run df.describe on each of them. And then you can index a uh, column and then whatever metric you want. And this provides maybe a bit of an easier way for us to um, calculate the statistics. Whereas if we were to use 2D lists, you would have to loop through all of them and write out the code yourself. And the reason we want to do this is because of like Nate talked about, normalizing the data. So when we grab, for example, uh, the standard deviation and the mean, we can use these to normalize the data into something that's easier to calculate uh, or easier to build AI models off of. So let's go ahead and grab. So we are, we've already grabbed the standard deviation. Let's grab the mean as well. So mean of this same column. And then confirm it okay sure and then now that we have that we can go ahead and create like this normalized column so p with normalized and the way we're going to do that is we're going to find the difference from the mean and then we're going to divide it by the standard deviation so something like this okay so we're going to find that and then we're going to print out this thing and then for comparison's sake, we're going to also print out the default P width. So you can see all of these numbers are now between plus minus one uh, standard deviation of the mean, positive or negative. Whereas before, for example, if we had a 0 0.2 and then we had a 2.3 and then we had a 2.0 and then we had a 1.9. It's a lot, it's a bit of a wider spread, whereas all of these are going to be contained in a more... Um, in a more easy to work with manner. And so you can see if we do um, p with normalized dot describe, these are the metrics now. And you can see they're a bit different from what we would have with p with. Oops. Okay. And so that's kind of. You can experiment with how you normalize the data and what metrics you use to normalize or what methods you might want to use to normalize. But having all of these statistics, uh, numbers, and metrics at your disposal with one df.describe function, you know, makes it a lot easier to, to normalize everything. All right. So we can also filter out various different types of data using um, lock and then conditions. This is useful. This is useful for kind of getting better data or getting more um, data that you want, I suppose. So, for example, if we want to create a filtered data frame like this, and then we want to filter out everything, uh, everything that has a sepal length between five and six, we can do so with these four lines here. So, filter. So we just create a new uh, copy of a data frame filter. And then we filter out everything where the sepal length is greater than five. Um, we put that into the data set and everything where the sepal length is less than six, we put that into the data set. And then you can see the filter. It's not apparent when we look at it like this, but if you describe it, you can see the min is 5.1, the max is 5.9 now. If you just look at the sepal length column only, right? So you see, this is what our filter is. So let's say we wanted to have it between five and eight. Now it's between 5.1 and 7.9. And 
do less than or equal to. That doesn't change because I don't think we have an eight in our data set, but something like that. And once again, you can play around with these types of um, functions in order to create more either balanced or just better data in general. And that's important when you're building these AI, AI algorithms in terms of both uh, the efficiency with which you build the models and also kind of the accuracy and the ability to predict for these models. Okay. Um, dot sort values is also kind of uh, a useful function. It does exactly what it describes. And you can see the interesting thing about this, I think, is that on the left here, the indices, like the original indices, so this was originally number 60, it's now number one, that's preserved. So it doesn't change it unless you use um, it, it's some function in, in the data set. I think it's like in place sort or something like that. Um, there's some function of the documentation, but this is also useful if you want to have everything in order um, look at, you know, what your mins are, what your maxes are. You can use describe, but if you want to just see it, like the first five values are, you know, here from two to 2.3. And then the last five values are from 3.9 to 4.4. So let's say maybe we want to filter out, filter this out. Um, this again. So I'm just going to copy this. Okay, so let's say we want to filter this out of this is less than 3.5 and the other one is greater than uh, is greater than 2.5. Right. Do that because we know, you know, we've looked at the sort of data set, we know, okay, this is gonna this is gonna work essentially. <laughs> All right. And so that's kind of it's a little bit of a quick rundown maybe, but it's a, just a little rundown of various things you can do with Pandas, why we use Pandas statistically in the context of AI, and how we can use it to create more balanced data, to filter out our data, and then also if we need to, to normalize our data as well. Okay, so a bit of a short lab. I'm sure you guys appreciate me not standing up here and talking for you know however long, right? But I'm going to go ahead and post the assignment and the key now.